Hello, and welcome back to the Ninox Learning Channel. With the release of Ninox 3.12, we have a powerful new feature that allows us to take Ninox content and export it into Excel spreadsheets. We can use this to create reports or to simply dump our data out of Ninox into an Excel spreadsheet form. In this class, we're going to learn how to create those exports. We're going to use this very simple general ledger accounting system that we've built. We have our chart of accounts table, where we have our balance sheet and income statement accounts, and our general ledger, where we have all of our accounting transactions. Here are our financial statements, the balance sheet, which shows our assets and liabilities, and the income statement, which shows our periodic profit and loss. Now in this class, what I want to do is create code so when I click this button, I can export all of the accounts in my chart of accounts in account number order. I don't want to use the export feature built into Ninox because that doesn't give me the kind of control that I need to get exactly the output that I want. Let's see how it works and then let's go behind the scenes and see how you can make it work in your Ninox application. Pay particular attention to this image field right here in the top left hand corner of my screen. When I click the export to Excel button, a new file is created and stored on this dashboard record, specifically in this field. I can then click on the field, and here it is. I named the spreadsheet COA, Chart of Accounts. I created a single page or a tab spelling out Chart of Accounts, which we see here. And I have my two columns, my account number and my account name. I specified that I wanted all of my accounts in account number sequence order, and that's what I see. I was able to name my column headings and define all of the rows that follow. Let's now look at the code that allowed us to go from this table in Ninox to this spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel. I'm now in administrative mode, and I've selected the button, and I'm going to look at the code that gets executed when this button is clicked. And here's that code. As you can see, it's very simple. There's not a lot to it. Four easy steps. Step one, we're going to define the columns. That's what appears here in row one at the top of each of our two columns. Then we're going to define our rows. This is the content that's going to appear starting in row two all the way down until the last record in the chart of accounts table has been presented. We're then going to combine that definition of columns and rows into a worksheet. That worksheet will contain a single tab called chart of accounts and will consist of the columns and rows as they were defined in steps one and two. So here is our worksheet. Here is our page right here called chart of accounts. And here are the columns and rows that we defined. And finally, this object is going to be created using the new function from 3.12, create XLSX. Let's take a little deeper dive into each of these four steps. In step one, we're going to use the let command to create a new variable called columns. And it's important to note that all of these key fields that you see in blue, columns, header, key, width, rows, worksheet. All of these are keywords. They must be spelled exactly as you see them here on screen, and they must be all lowercase unless designated otherwise. So step one, we create our columns. Our columns consists of an array, and we know that an array consists of a series of objects. Each object in this array is contained inside a set of braces and consists of three key elements. The name of the column using the header keyword, the width of the column in characters using the width keyword, and the key or the hook. This is a variable that we define inside of double quotation marks that is what we're going to use to connect or hook the column to the rows of data that appear below it. You'll note there are two different header, key, and width definitions. That means there are two columns being defined, and we see those columns here. 
Here we can see on rows three, four, and five of our code, the header account number, and there it is in Excel, the keyword or key X account number, which consists of the account number field, which we see defined on row 12, which is where we defined our rows, and we see that it has a width of 30 characters. So here we have two columns defined, here we have two columns, here we have all of our rows consisting of all of the records in the chart of accounts in order according to the content of the account number field. And here's the other side of the hook. This key in double quotation marks tells us what is going to appear beneath this column heading. The other side of that key is here to the left of the colon indicating that the rows consist of all the content in this table. The first row, or the first key, consists of this field, the account number. And the second column, or the second key, consists of this field, the account name. Steps one and two, columns and rows defined and connected together. Now we create the worksheet. This is the worksheet right here. The worksheet will consist of one page, which as we can see on line 16 of our code, is called Chart of Accounts. And here's the Chart of Accounts label in that page right there. This Chart of Account page consists of the columns as we define them in rows 2 through 10, and the data set as we defined it on rows 11 through 14. So this column definition and this definition of rows will make up this page on this worksheet, and there's the worksheet. Now that we've defined all of the contents of our spreadsheet and put them together in this worksheet, and again, it must be worksheets, all lowercase, we then can define the three parameters of the create XLSX function. The first parameter, this, which is a keyword, indicates that the result of this Excel creation function will be attached to this record in our Ninox table, this dashboard. The second parameter says what is being created is defined in the variable worksheets. It was step three where we brought the worksheets variable to life on row 15 and it was on rows 16, 17, and 18 that we named the page and the contents, columnar and row, of that page. And then finally, in double quotes, we have the ability to name the exported result of this worksheet. And I chose the name coa.xlsx. You can use anything you want to the left of the dot. But to the right of the dot, it must be XLSX, indicating that the result, the output of this create function will be an Excel spreadsheet. And finally, because I'm attaching this resultant spreadsheet to this record in this table in this Ninox application, I created an image field called export file, which will be the container where this worksheet called coa.xlsx will be contained. Let's see it in action. Here we have our image field. You'll notice it contains the last export that we created. You'll also note that in my code, on the very first row, I get rid of the last export, empty out the export file image field, and will then put the new file, the new created spreadsheet, back into that now empty field here on row 21. So pay particular attention to this image field in the top left-hand corner. You'll see this file disappear and a new file with the identical name appear on top of it. There it goes and there it is. And we now have our spreadsheet. This is what we would call a very simple spreadsheet. No formatting, no colors, no definition of font or font size or alignment, and only a single data set. As we now know, 
our data sets are defined in step two when we create our rows. And in this case, we only created one set of rows, and it comes from this one table in Minox called Chart of Accounts. In our next video, we're going to look at how to create a compound export. We're going to define our columns, but we're going to have multiple pages in our one worksheet. And we're going to have each of those pages populated with different sets of content from different tables in Ninox. We call this an export packet. And we're going to learn how to build that in our next training class. I'll see you there. Visit us at www.nioxis.com. Here you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox Help Desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Minox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Minox questions, and you can meet other members of the global Minox community. We look forward to seeing you there.